So I'll be giving you a brief description of how MMSIF has been used in structural bioinformatics and structural biology. Uh, as uh, Brian said, I, I'm representing the, uh, the RCSB PDB and the WWPDB, which is the um, international organization that is now uh, sort of looking over uh, taking responsibility for deposition and distribution of macromolecular structure data. Um, by way of overview, I'll try to extend a little bit um, the history of how MMSIF uh, was developed and how it's been implemented, give you an idea of how, um, how the PDB is archiving structure, experimental and reference data, and uh, how MMSIF has in some ways come to the rescue when addressing some of the current challenges that uh, we face in data archiving, and then give you a, um, a brief description of some uh, recent developments um, on the data deposition and delivery front. Uh, Samir Belenkar will be talking about this in more detail when he discusses our new deposition and uh, uh, annotation and, and validation system later in the meeting. Uh, so this is another view of the timeline, uh, kind of specific to uh, MMSIF, but it gives a, a picture of the uh, Brian's sort of milestone of uh, the original development of the small molecule SIF dictionary. Uh, there was a, a, a convening of a working group by the IUCR uh, originally chaired by Paula Fitzgerald to uh, develop an extension to small molecule SIF dictionary for macromolecular structure. Um, that process uh, took a little more than a decade. It involved a great deal of community participation. And if uh, one thing that I would like to emphasize is that this is the SIF effort overall has been very much a community um, grassroots effort uh, and has benefited greatly from uh, the, uh, the participation of people within the crystallographic community, but other communities as well. These workshops uh, that have, uh, have uh, contributed to the development of SIF have involved participation from not only people in the crystallographic domain, uh, but also in computer science and informatics in general, and a lot of uh, a lot of very valuable advice was obtained and and has impacted the ultimate uh, uh, evolution of MMSIF, and I think the whole SIF technology framework uh, in general. So, from the from the perspective of the PDB and PDB delivery, Brian already uh, indicated that. Uh, Somewhere in the late 1990s, uh, the management of the underlying uh, infrastructure for managing macromolecular data at the PDB adopted MMSIF as a, as a vehicle for, uh, for its data management. And that was based primarily not on format considerations, but on the dictionary. And most of what I'll be saying today is, is very dictionary-centric. It's a very, uh, the dictionaries have a, a very rich semantic and computer accessible content uh, that we've tried to exploit at the PDB in our data management. Um, we've, because we've extended um, the original SIF content uh, to address methods in macromolecular structural biology other than crystallography, uh, we've used the acronym PDB Exchange Dictionary, but in general this technology framework is uh, essentially what was developed for, for MMSIF. Uh, now, as Brian indicated, uh, the WWPDB is using this technology, and most recently the WWPDB has uh, redeveloped its entire deposition and annotation uh, data processing pipeline with the dictionary technology at its underpinning. So the dictionary that... Uh, the dictionary framework that's currently in use now is uh, used, to used to represent 
all of the data that's collected and distributed by the PDB uh, for describing experiment um, and structural models. It includes descriptions of X-ray, neutron, NMR, electron microscopy, and SAS methods. We're actively working on developing extensions to describe various hybrids of these, um, of these methods. In addition to sort of the experimental um, and methodological ex experiment uh, descriptions, uh, there's inclusion of information describing um, the preceding steps of protein production, uh, a great deal of the biological uh, description of the sample, and additional structural and uh, functional details um, associated with the structural, with the resulting structural model. Uh, the, the overall dictionary content uh, that we, uh, that documents all of this uh, can be browsed at uh, our dictionary resource site, mmsif.pdb.org. So that's scientific content. Uh, from the point of view of data management, it's the metadata content of the dictionary which is, which is centrally important. And that includes semantic information, uh, very detailed definitions and examples. Uh, it includes software accessible information that's used to standardize and validate the information, such as data types, um, uh, allowed boundaries, boundary values and control vocabularies, organizational, as, uh, organizational or, or schema elements, um, the, the model which is uh, embodied in MMSIF can probably most, be, e most easily be thought of as a sort of a tabular data model that maps very well to uh, describing tables of data. Uh, because we deal with um, uh, structures which have rather complex identifiers starting from models to chains to residues to residue names, residue number, atoms and atom names. We deal with rather detailed natural keys or natural identifiers. Keeping track of that and keeping track of perhaps multiple versions of those that may occur at different points um, in the data processing process is a referential integrity problem and uh, the data dictionary provides parent-child relationships that allow us to manage that kind of complexity uh, in software by documenting all of the related identifiers. In addition to that, uh, Brian discussed the implementation of, um, of methods uh, which are embraced in the dictionary framework as well as um, um, the ability to define relationships of um, interdependencies between data items, uh, such as uh, defining uh, the association between a target value and its associated precision. So as, as I said, the dictionary is kind of central to uh, our data management strategy, and it's used as a tool to um, to, to document and create schemas of different types for different applications, either database or format descriptions. It's also used underlying all of our tools for validation, for accepting data through our deposition systems or developing data harvesting tools, pulling data out of other applications. Uh, it's also central in our ability to produce data in different concrete file formats on the PDB archive. That includes the traditional PDB format file, SIF files, files in XML and in RDF. We talk about those a little bit. The PDB format was sort of the original format that was used by the archive dating back to the early 70s. It's a record-oriented format. Uh, the SIF format began to be used in the archive around 1997. These dates represent the date at which all the data in the archive, all the structure data, was distributed in this format. Uh, the XML version, which we call PDBML, uh, became available in 2005, and the RDF implementation in 2011. Again, um, 
the way these files are produced um, is, is basically using the MMSIF file as a master format, generating uh, from that um, the, other, um, the other formats. PDB format, which is by far the most popular format, is a record-oriented format, which includes textural remarks, which are marked up kind of like this. Um, the documentation for this format is basically by example in a textual format description document. It's very widely used and very widely supported um, in software. Brian showed you some examples of SIF format. It can either be key value uh, with sort of well-defined names which are tied to the dictionary, or tabular, where the column names are ba basically precede a regular, um, a regular layout of rows and columns. Uh, we believe it's a simple syntax. Uh, most people familiar with it agree. Um, all of the semantics are defined in a data dictionary. And uh, currently, there's pretty good support for this in almost all popular programming languages. The XML version adopts the same naming conventions as SIF with the introduction of a namespace. Um, key identifiers are represented as attributes in the XML style. Other items within <coughs> categories are represented um, as elements. The XML file brings a variety of overhead with markup. Um, XML PDB files are typically 10 to 12 times larger than any of the other um, representations. Uh, it's particularly a problem for Atom records, which, is the, which are the records which have um, the tables which have the longest length. Uh, so in addition to providing fully marked up files, uh, the PDB provides um, files where the atoms are represented as, the atom records are represented in a stringified form, very much like they are in the record-oriented file, uh, and a regular expression is provided to help people break that up into individual data elements. The RDF example uh, is a, um, follows the same kind of um, protocol as the PDBML in terms of naming conventions. These names follow the names in the data dictionary. This is just a, a different schema to accommodate uh, the RDF model. Uh, this also allows well-defined URLs to be associated with uh, particular data items within, uh, within the PDB. And again, uh, this, is, this has been used to um, to provide kind of a, a, a unification of PDB data, uh, primarily with other biological data resources that have similarly implemented this approach, uh, such as uh, Uniprobe, for instance. So in, in addition to the experimental and structure data, PDB provides chemical reference data in SIF format. Um, all of the uh, individual chemical um, components, uh, distinguishable molecules, either monomers or ligands in the PDB are represented in a chemical dictionary. Um, currently about 18,000 um, unique molecules in the PDB. It's the same approach that's used um, by CCP4 in developing their monomer <coughs> library, which is shared by most of the major refinement packages in macromolecular crystallography. Uh, the refinement libraries include a richer information uh, as required for their packages, but the essential chemical descriptions are contained, uh, me, are contained in the PDB dictionary. That includes nomenclature, uh, stereochemistry, aromatic annotation, a set of an example set of model coordinates taken from the PDB archive, and a set of ideal coordinates. Um, in addition to the atom list, there's a, a comparable list of information describing uh, the details of bonding. We don't embed this information currently in individual data files, but provide it as a reference file that people can access to describe any of the, uh, any of the monomers in the file. 
We've recently released information in CIF format again, describing the small polymer molecules uh, in, uh, in the PDB in an effort to provide both a, a full chemical representation as well as a sequence level representation of these molecules. Um, this is accompanied with a significant amount of uh, functional annotation associated with the roles of these molecules um, uh, in, in the different structures in which they appear. So that's kind of the state of where we are. Um, one of the challenges that we face is that Structural biology is moving very quickly and dealing with larger and more complex molecules. And the most popular format in the archive has not been able to really uh, match the, um, or keep pace with, um, with the size and the complexity of molecules that we need to, that we need to express. And it's, um, while we depend on a format MMCIF which is extremely flexible in that respect, we have used it in a way that we've, we've only adopted uh, nomenclature uh, conventions in MMCIF that were supportable within the PDB framework. And that includes restricting the scope of identifiers to the sort of the character limitations in the record-oriented format. So that limits us to um, the representation of, say, 62 chains or uh, a maximum of 100,000 atoms. And the result of this is that large molecules, for instance, this ribosome, ribosomal uh, structure, is represented uh, in 10 different PDB entries. It's not possible to represent this in a single PDB format entry. And that's cumbersome both for the depositor uh, it's cumbersome for us in managing the data, and it's very cumbersome for the end user that has to try to assemble that final model. So size isn't the only issue. The textual remarks that are present in the PDB format file don't, don't uh, uh, are, are not easy to document and come to us in a, a, in a relatively uh, uh, non-standard way. So extracting that information and standardizing it um, over time has, has been difficult to achieve. Uh, the SIF dictionary, on the other hand, provides us with a mechanism to keep that information, uh, keep every element of that information very, very well defined so what, we're, what we want to achieve uh, in the deposition and annotation pipeline at the PDB is the ability to capture the information in a form from, uh, from, from the data generation point from, from the laboratory in such a way that when it goes into the PDB, it can come out of the PDB uh, in a form that can be reused uh, with fidelity uh, to largely reproduce the experiment uh, that's represented um, in the deposited entry um, and capture all of the associated annotation uh, um, along with that. Now that's, we don't expect to be able to capture things at perhaps the ultimate level of detail that one might like, but we can certainly do a better job than we do uh, uh, with the format tools that we have at present. So about three years ago, uh, we began circulating um, some format proposals to the community uh, that were suggestions or starting points for how we might go about addressing this problem uh, of both the metadata description, uh, doing a better job with the metadata description and addressing size. Uh, that led to a workshop in 2011 of the software de uh, refinement package developers, uh, including CCP4, Phoenix, and Global Phasing. The outcome of that meeting was the recommendation that, um, that these groups and the community adopt SIF 
as a working format and as, in particular, a deposition format uh, rather than using the conventional PDB format. And in, uh, in May of this year, the working group released recommendations uh, as well as implementations uh, right, okay, um, to address that. So the, um, this is a, a picture of a smiling group of developers after having made this recommendation uh, in Hinkson. And um, what's really, really key about this is that this group has, um, uh, this group has delivered um, within all of the major packages now an option that allows them to use MMSIF as a, as a deposition. To address the large structures, some minimal extensions have been proposed in the size of identifiers for chain IDs, for coordinate format uh, precision occupancies and B factors. It's been recommended that these be used only as needed to represent large structures. Uh, shortly after those recommendations became available, uh, we had some uh, particularly large depositions, which would have required uh, as many as 25 PDB entries. These, uh, these structures have uh, more than two and a half million atom, atom records uh, in each entry. These are now distributed on the PDB by the PDB in individual SIF files rather than um, only as a collection of, of divided files. So we're very mindful of trying to provide backward compatibility. So SIF provides for this and allows for us to deliver data, which um, while having all the features that we want in terms of uh, well-defined semantics, taking advantage of our data dictionary, can pre be presented in essentially the same uh, flat column format uh, as the original PDB, and this helps to preserve people's ability to access this information in a line-based um, in a line-based manner. Uh, we've also tried to uh, we will be adopting a style which will push method-specific details off to the right in the file, so that people who are coming to this and working with different experimental methods, either from 3DEM or NMR, will be able to capture the sort of the non-method specific data in, say, the first 11 columns and anything method specific in the latter columns. So all of that technology has gone into developing our new deposition and annotation system, which is end-to-end -end built on uh, the dictionary framework. Uh, as I said, Samir will talk about that a little bit later. Uh, there's a wide range of software tools, including the major refinement packages that are now providing tools to deal with MMSIF format for both visualization, uh, parsing, and checking. Uh, the work that I've done has basically been part of a global effort, including our CSB in the U.S., BMRB for the NMR component in Madison, PDBE in Hinkston, and PDBJ in Osaka. Uh, this is part of the WWPDB group at our last get-together, and thank you very much for your attention.